Hi, Year 10, how are you? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Apart from my voice is hurting because I've done lots and lots of uh, lesson recording so far today, but hey-ho. Um, right, so we're going to move on. We've been looking at an inspector course from a revision point of view. You obviously need to be aware that it's important to know the quotes off by heart, though. So while we're moving away from an inspector course now, it would be sensible if you, if you are finishing. I know a lot of students are saying they're finishing their lessons with a bit of time to spare. If that's you, then looking at some revision and using those posters that we've just made in the room as well. Uh, you could get them printed or if you've done them by paper and stick them up and practice the quotes, things like that. Um, but we're moving on now to revise love and relationship poetry. I don't really feel that it's a good idea to study Macbeth while we're in lockdown, simply because I know that there are a few students in the group who still haven't logged on, still haven't picked up the phone when teachers have called them. And so for that reason, it's something we'd have to revisit anybody anyway um, just like we've just revisited an inspector calls um, so I think it's important that we stick to revision activities and we'll do Macbeth later on I hope that makes sense so um, there's another sheet before that we're going to start off then with when we two parted so first of all tell me what it's about okay try and give some detail though I mean the clue parted in the question gives you a bit but can you say some more than that uh, can you remember any quotes this is the one that I know stands a one off by heart from memory by the way so I'm a bit smug about this one and lots of the other groups in school and the other sets uh, they do make students memorize this poem they go on to say you know try and memorize all of them or try and memorize key quotations but all the other groups in school apart from you guys should be memorizing or should have already when they did this the first time memorized this poem um, so can you remember any quotes and, um, sorry, distracted by an email coming through there. Uh, remember that single words on their own can be quotes. So don't think, oh, I don't know, I can't remember anything good. You know, uh, just try and find those keywords. And we, I talk about memory all the time. Don't let your memory trick you into saying you don't know and then you just give up. That's not how memory works. You've got to find the right mental draw, okay? And you've got to, like, go through the filing cabinets and work out where that's stored because it's a little bit further away at the back because we've not used it for a while okay but it is in there you do have that file uh, and then finally what type of relationship is being described in the poem uh, so I want you to pause but I, I need you to spend at least 10 minutes here trying to scratch at that memory and work out what you know because it is in there and you do know it so pause now and answer those questions okay amazing so hopefully your summary is that it's about a bloke remembering when his girlfriend dumped him and how upset he was and then he tells us that he's still upset now and then he finishes off by saying in the future i'm still going to be upset okay uh quotes from it so let me do the first verse so when we do um how does it start <laughs> getting it wrong now i've said it was it, it so when we two parted in silence and tears half broken hearted to sever for years pale grew thy cheek and cold colder thy kiss surely that hour foretold sorrow to this is the first one uh, so uh, hopefully you pick some there are some key quotes that we're going to look at again over the next few lessons as well so i'm not going to give you too much of that to start with the type of relationship obviously it's dysfunctional you might have written about the fact that it was an affair though okay the the woman that he's talking to was married to somebody else at the time of their relationship okay so let's look at this in a bit more detail uh, so we're going to look at what the poem's about and the context because i'm betting you can't remember a lot but let's see, these uh, five key words are in the poem. So again, scratchy, scratchy at the back of your mind. You know these, we've done these, they're in your annotated anthology. So don't just give up, sorry, that should be on silent. Don't just give up, find those bits of information. Fame, I think we know, but the others, just have a scratch away and see if you can find those definitions. The easy option here is to just keep going with the video and don't bother. But the reason we need to practice scratching at the back of your memory is because the more you do it, the more these will be in your memory. You won't have to scratch around, they'll just be there, which is going to therefore make your practice essays easier and ultimately your exams easier. So please do pause and do this instead of just carrying the video on. Do that now. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers then. So sever means to cut or to separate. Um, foretold means predicted, so it's telling the future, it's giving hints of what's to come. Fame is just being famous for something, isn't it? But here he's talking about the reputation, uh, so famous for being a sort of person. So for example, you could say Boris Johnson is famous for being a terrible prime minister. Or you could say um, that Keith Lemon is famous for being incredibly rude, things like that. So it's a specific type of, of 
personality in that reputation. Nell, so it's pronounced Nell, but it's got that silent K at the start, is a church bell rung slowly when somebody died, okay? And rue means to regret or feel, feel sorrow about something, so you feel bad. Stewie Griffin in Family Guy says it a lot. He says, you'll rue the day uh, all the time, so you'll regret the way you're speaking to me. Excuse me. So, who is this and what do you know about him? Pause the video and answer those questions now. Scratchy, scratchy. Okay, super. So, you should have worked out that this is Lord Byron. And he was very famous for his wild party lifestyle. Um, I'm aware that I'm publicly listing this on YouTube, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my language than I might be in a normal lesson. Uh, but he was very fond of physical things uh, that connect to men and women. Okay, so he was known as a bit of a heartbreaker. And the quotation that people said about him was mad, bad and dangerous to know. So uh, we're going to move on from that then now. So there's a video clip here. I'm going to put this link in the lesson information for you to copy and paste. But it's just for you to, to, to read through that and then to revisit Lord Byron in more detail. Write down anything that you hadn't remembered on your notes for this lesson as well. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, so finally, I want you to read through the poem. Now, it would be ideal if you guys have got your anthology with you However, if you haven't, if we go just straight to Google, look here, and you can write down when we two parted, when it loads, anyway. I'm in school today, as you can probably tell from the background, which makes the Wi-Fi a bit slower than when I'm at home. So when we two parted, which I can't spell, like that. And then if you put full text, then you'll get links to the actual poem, okay, instead of just what people think about it. Another thing you can do is you can include the word annotated and it will give you a version that's got lots of stuff behind it. Okay, so this is taking me to the poem on Schmoop, which is a really useful uh, revision website, not just for English, but for lots of subjects, I think. So we'll just give this a second to load. While it's doing that, uh, no, never mind, it's here now. I'll talk to you in a second about that. So, when we two parted, Lord Byron, and you can, you've got the entire poem here, look. If you've got your anthology, you can use your anthology version. That would be helpful for you. Or you could change full text and put annotated, or just add annotated onto the end of that. Annotated. I can never spell annotated, though. Okay, and this takes you somewhere else. Obviously, it won't be annotated in the way that I usually do it necessarily, which is the, the method you're familiar with. But you'll find some stuff, hopefully. So it's worth just having a play about anyway. So this one doesn't look very well annotated. But it's worth playing about and looking at different websites and not just uh, taking the one that comes up first. Unless, again, you've got your anthology, at which point you won't really need to. Anyway, I'm sure you get the idea is that you can look for the full copy of the poem uh, and that will come up for you. So, here we go. So your task then, your final task for this lesson today is to read through the poem and answer the following questions. So, what type of relationship is being explored? So are they madly in love? Are they divorced? How do they feel? Uh, next, who is the speaker? Okay, so who's the person whose voice is in the poem? So it's not always that the writer and the speaker are the same. Sometimes they're not, uh, but often they are. So who is the person speaking in the poem? What's the speaker's message? So what are they trying to say? What's their overall summary? Okay, uh, those of you that watch Celebrity Juice uh, will know that Keith Lemon always says what's the message when he's talking about a guest's new DVD or, or album or whatever. He always says, what's the message? So it's like a summary in a sentence or two. And then that's it for today. I am exploring the possibility of doing some live one-to-one -one or small group lessons to give you extra help because I am aware that you guys are a GCSE, GCSE group um, and that you know you working at home without my direct help is a bit of a challenge at times. Um, but I'm not yet sure how that's going to work or if it's going to work. I obviously need permission. The, the, yeah, no, we've got to make sure that we follow the safeguarding rules. Um, so if I'm sitting in my house and you're in your house, who's going to verify that we're not doing anything that we shouldn't be doing? Um, so I'm still trying to work those things out. It might be that they say no, but I'm trying to get people at school to agree to letting me do that as well. If that was possible, that would mean that, that some of your lessons would be with me actually direct teaching you and talking to you instead of doing it through a video like this.
okay so hopefully by the end of this lesson today you will have a good understanding of who Lord Byron is you will have familiarized yourself with his life a little bit more and also started to work with the text in the poem too we will pick this up next lesson take care